That example actually is happening or has happened already in this country right now, even as we speak. The Federal Reserve more than doubled the monetary base uh, since roughly the summer of 2008. Okay, so this has already happened. The, the raw material for inflation is already built into the pipeline. It's already baked into the cake. There's no, I mean, unless they, unless they contract the monetary base, there's no pulling it back, right? It's out there. Um, there's a lot of discussion right now about quantitative easing. Quantitative easing is just printing of money. Quantitative easing means we're going to increase the quantity of money. Uh, when they print up that money, what are they gonna do with it? They're probably gonna buy treasury bonds. They might buy you know, mortgage backs, they might buy some agency securities, but in effect, they are going to buy probably some debt instruments. Their goal is to lower interest rates and spark another boom in the, uh, in the housing market. I don't think it's gonna work, but they're talking about QE2, right? Quantitative easing, they've already done a trillion dollars last March. Um, the, the chief economist at Goldman Sachs thinks that they're gonna do two trillion dollars this time. I mean, a trillion here, a trillion there, who knows? I mean, once the creative people get involved, it's very hard to say. And remember where we came from. These very creative, intelligent people started out by saying, yes, we agree that the free market is the right thing to do, but the government should spend money. So we're gonna spend money, we're gonna tax, that causes problems. We're gonna borrow, that causes more problems, and now we're gonna inflate. That causes even more problems. I wish these people would just get a life, stop interfering with the free market. I mean, we, we became a great industrial power without all this taxing and spending and borrowing and inflating, right? If you look at the growth of government in the 20th century, at the start of the 20th century, government as a percentage of the economy was under 10% of the economy. If you look at where we are right now, we're at 40% of the economy. It is enormous. And I have a feeling it's going to shrink. I don't know how and when. I think inflation is effectively going to wipe out all the debts in the country. I think the dollar is going to be destroyed. And hopefully we'll start over and we'll be a little smarter. And in case you're wondering, inflation is everywhere. I mean, even Walmart over the summer raised prices by 6% over the course of a few weeks. You can go check it out. Um, if you look at oil, for most of the 1990s, oil was around $20 a barrel. It had a spike during the Gulf War, the first Gulf War, up to about 40 bucks. There's a period uh, around 98 or 99 when oil dropped down to $10. But it's been around 20 bucks, pretty safe. Since, uh, well, let's see, from 2002 to 2008, oil spiked up from roughly $20 to over 140, almost $150 a barrel. It obviously then crashed. Of course, it has since rebounded. But today, at roughly $80 a barrel, oil is four times as expensive as it was 10 years ago. Now, undoubtedly, some of that is because of the increased demand um, in the economy, global economy, primarily from Asia. I mean, China is now the world's largest energy consumer. Um, but a lot of that has got to be also due to inflation. It's very hard for me to imagine that the price of oil has risen uh, by a factor of four simply due to increased demand uh, from Asia because demand in the West is actually falling, in the United States has been falling. Uh, so you can look at oil. You can also look at gold. You know, 10 years ago, back around uh, 2001, I guess, gold was below $300 an ounce. Right? The first time I was here a few, five, six months ago, gold was at about 1200 Recently, it went almost up to 1400 It's since pulled back a little bit. Um, we think it's headed a lot higher. I mean, Peter, it's my boss, Peter Schiff, predicted that, I think probably 10 years ago, I should have listened to him. He was right, I was wrong. Um, he predicted that the Dow and gold was gonna meet, we're gonna meet one-to-one. -one. He still thinks that. I mean, it might be at 2500 it might be at 3000 it might be at 4000 it might be at 10000 It really depends on how much inflation the Federal Reserve creates. But one way or another, those two numbers are going to meet. The Dow right now is at 11,000, gold's at 1,400. 10 years ago, the Dow was at 11,000, gold's at 250. Maybe in another 10 years, the Dow will be at 11,000 and gold will be 11,000. Or maybe they'll be at 5,000. We don't know yet, but we know it's, that's where we're headed. And if you think about it, gold has no economic use. Gold is a pure um, hedge against inflation. It does not earn any interest. It does not pay any dividends. It does not earn any rents, right? There's no economic use. Like a bank account, if you put your money into a bank account, you can get interest, theoretically. Um, if you buy an investment property, you get rents. You know, if you buy a stock, you get dividends. With gold, gold does not have any economic use. But what gold is, is 
for historical reasons, a hedge against inflation is a store of value. You're Indian, I'm Indian. Indians love gold for thousands of years because it is a store of value. There are reasons we can go into. If you're interested, we can talk about it um, during the Q&A. But for reasons that are not important right now, it is universally recognized as a store of value. So it's got to be telling you something. When gold goes from under $300 an ounce to almost $1,400 an ounce, a 400% increase in 10 years, that's got to ring off some alarm bells. You know, for the Krugmans of the world, I don't think it does. I don't think, has he ever talked about gold in any of his, in any of his columns or anything? Uh, I, well, I had a professor, um, I'm still taking this class, he was actually thinking, I think he takes the mural uh, of Rubani, the other guy who predicted the Mural Rubini? Yeah, Rubini. Uh, that uh, gold is just an asset bubble that's going, it's getting really big and it's going to pop at, at some point, right? Gold, gold is a hedge against negative real interest rates. If you look back in the early 80s when gold was at $800 plus per ounce, what broke the back of the, of the gold market was positive real interest rates. Right? If you are getting positive real interest rates on your money, let's say you have a dollar and you go to the bank and you put it in, the, in your bank account and at the end of the year you get say 5% interest, right? that's pretty good. But that's got to be a 5% real rate of return. If it's, you know, if inflation is running at 10% a year and you get, you know, one dollar and five cents at the end of the year, then you have lost purchasing power. Because now the, the things that cost you a dollar at the start of the year now cost you a dollar ten. You only have a dollar five, so you don't want to put your money in the bank, right? So you turn to gold as an alternative. Gold is a hedge against negative real interest rates. Um, what broke the back of the gold market in the early 80s was positive real interest rates. Because when, when you can get a dollar five back, and let's say inflation is now running at 1% a year, you will do that. You'll, you don't want to take the risk. You just want your money back and maybe a little bit of interest to compensate you for locking up your money for a year. So at some point, if we ever get to a point where interest rates turn positive in the real sense, not just in the nominal sense, but in the real sense, so that means the, the short term interest rate minus the rate of inflation is a positive number, we'll get there. We're not there. I don't think we're getting there anytime soon. Um, and if you really think about it, it's not really gold that is rising. Gold is actually fixed. I and mean, gold is hard to get out of the ground. You've got to mine it. It takes energy. It takes labor. It takes machines. It is hard. You get like a few grams of gold per ton. We were looking at a mining company recently. I think they're talking about like 10 grams of gold per ton of material that they bring out of the earth. <coughs> it is hard work. So gold is a constant. You really can't add to the stock of gold in the country, you know, or in the world at any dramatic rate. What really is happening is you have gold that is fixed and you have the currencies that are falling against gold. Primarily the dollar, but actually every currency in the world is falling against gold. So this is the plan. The plan that they have is to inflate the money supply. Right? That's why gold is rising. It's a sign of inflation. If you really think about it, gold is not rising. Gold is constant. The dollars and the rest of the world's currencies are falling against gold. Gold is flat, actually. The dollar is declining. But this is the plan. You know, right now, we don't link our debt contracts to inflation. Treasury loans you, or you loan the Treasury money. You know, right now, I think the 10-year, no, it's about 2.5%, 2 2.7% interest, right? It's not tied to inflation. Um, people who loan the federal government 10-year um, money for 2.7% are going to get hurt very badly, primarily our foreign creditors. Um, you might be wondering, well, why, why doesn't the government then start to, or why don't our creditors then insist that we tie our debt contracts to the rate of inflation? This is actually, there is precedent for this. Brazil, in the, from about 87 to 97, went through a very severe inflation. It was basically a hyperinflation, right? Towards the middle or towards the end of their hyperinflation, when the government wanted to borrow money, they had to index the rate that they paid on that debt to uh, an index called the IPCA, which is effectively just a proxy for inflation. So, um, you know, in Brazil at the time, inflation was running at 2,000% a year. So that dollar candy bar that we were talking about, um, at the end of the year, would cost 20 bucks. Okay, so it's serious. I'm 